Yeah, sure. Uh, we we gonna pick up. Um, yeah, I guess the stream had had went out. It's raining over here, lightning, so it might have something to do with that. But um, yeah, we just gonna continue on. Um, your brother's holding something. Yeah, I got. It. Uh, this is uh, Second Timothy chapter two, verses uh, fifteen. It says, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that word study, uh, I believe it's the word spudazo. And when you look at that word spudazo, it goes to being uh, diligent. So you have to be uh, uh, diligent and actually uh, study, the, study these uh, certain breakdowns like the uh, bishop was saying. You gotta be like a, a breakdown nerd, you know, you gotta, like the uh, brother of Rock was saying, we're gonna have people coming to us, you know, in that time or even before that time, we're gonna have to know how to uh, answer these people uh, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashan al We're gonna have to be able to uh, study these things, get deep into it, you know, not just reading and, you know, just closing a book, actually, you know, you know getting a notepad, you know, writing, write, writing breakdowns. You know? mm -hmm. and that's that's what's gonna help, um, help to give more understanding to the scriptures and to, uh, you know, actually give a word on the spot, you know? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That quick piece here. Yeah. This is uh, Proverbs yeah. Proverbs 20, verse 15. Yeah. Proverbs 15 and 28. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, mm. but the mouth of the wicked forth out he thinks. Like you said, the precept you brought out was the spirit one come out a second time. Studying, man, studying so that we be able, to, may be able to answer. Like you said, it's that flood is coming. People gonna have questions. Is, 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 it, is it working? Stream. Um, I take it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we, it's on. Okay. Yeah. So that, you know, we're supposed to be studying to be able to know what we're talking about, man. All right. We don't want it to be, you know, leading people astray and not really know what this thing is about. People are gonna come with questions. You know, look up for look for the answers. You know, the Lord had established, he set us up, you know, of course, beginning with the apostles and elders to be the, the leaders of the people. That's right, you know? I got something for you. This is uh, 1 Peter 3 and 15. Ah, oh, man, that's a spirit. Yeah. <laughs> but sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So the scripture is saying you're supposed to be ready to answer the questions when there's another man that's inquiring about your hope, right. okay? Because our hope is extensive. Our hope extends beyond Babylon the Great, okay? A lot of people hope is in materialistic things, cars, clothes, you know, uh, marriages, careers, but our hope is extensive. It goes into another, another lifestyle. You know, it goes into different planets. It goes into multiple women. It goes into a different government structure. Mm -hmm. So when there's Jake's that's coming up to you asking you, about your hope, about what you claim to believe in, you're supposed to have the answer, you know? And if you don't have the answers, then what? Then your hope is not really where you think it's at, right. you know? Your hope is not aligned with what, what, what it's supposed to be aligned with, and that's what, what the brother was saying, that's where you check yourself, you know? That's where you check yourself. Because you can, you can think that you trying to excel in the spirit by trying to do carnal things, whereas working out, whether it's career-wise, whether it's, you know, push-ups, diet, and you think, yeah, I'm trying to grow in the spirit, all in all, you're really forsaking the spirit. Because mm -hmm. you think you're trying to grow in the spirit, but no, you're feeding your flesh. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're using that as a tool, like you progress. Yeah, you know, I did, I do 100 push-ups a day. I go do, I work on this, I work on that, I jog, you know, I'm building my family up, you know, I got this job, I make this amount of money, but all in all, you ain't even read the book of Revelations. So the scriptures say you're supposed to be uh, give an answer to them that, that that's inquiring about your hope and meekness, man. I just want to, I just want to bring that out, bro. I got a quick question. Um, this is uh, Matthew six and twenty four. It says, "No man speaking of what the bishop was just just brought out. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve." Um, and um, as the bishop was going to earlier, he was talking about, you know, when he was, uh, actually the captain was talking about money. You know, you have, have some cats that may want to, you know, not prioritizing the truth first because the truth is supposed to be a lifestyle and your job and everything else is supposed to be your side hustle, mm -hmm. you know? So, <clears throat> 
So if you're not prioritizing and putting this truth first, you really don't love the truth anyway. You really hate it in the first place. Because if you really love this thing, you you be cut. You feel some kind of way when you can't do what you're supposed to do. Absolutely. You know? You, you ain't you don't need nobody to tell you. You already feel that way because what? The scriptures say examine thyself daily. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to already be examining yourself to know where your flaws at so you can correct yourself, you know? And if you're not doing that, you know, then a brother can come, the spirit to have a brother come check you on it. As the brother was saying, uh, Todd Zabba was saying, push you through, through the finish line. Hey man, come on, let's get it going. And then if that don't happen, the first line of defense is you checking yourself. The second line of defense is the brother checking you. You don't want to get to the third. You don't want to do the third. You don't want to get to the third. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you, you, you have to hold yourself to a level of accountability in this thing. This isn't a kid show. This isn't for shits and giggles, man. We, we have our, our mind and our eyes set on high, you know? And, 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 and uh, we always bring out Isaiah 33, 33 and 6. It says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. The fear of the Lord is thy treasure, right? But if, if, if you, where's your wisdom? How are you getting your wisdom? Where's your knowledge coming from? You know, if it's not coming through the fear of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, then it ain't really knowledge. It ain't really fear. And it's not going to... You're not going to be stable in that day because, as I said earlier, what measure you put into this thing, as the uh, Apostle Tahar said, what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. I got something for you. Go ahead. Um, Ecclesiastes 18 and 20. Before judgment, examine thyself. Mm -hmm. And in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. Humble thyself before thou be sick. And in the time of sins, show repentance. So the scripture say before judgment, do what? Examine yourself, man. Basically, check, check, your, check your parameters, man. Check and see what you got going on. You know, hey, you can get lost in the sauce, man. You won't even know you're getting lost in the sauce. Man. You know? Because you think you're on point. You're going through the motions of the truth and ain't nobody said nothing. Just because you show up to camp, you might do three, four videos a week. You think you're good, but then your, your life, you're all into partying. You're all here. You're all there. you with this woman. you with that woman. You, you, I mean, just, just going, you know, going ape, ape shit. You know? But then you have a standard set up in the truth and you go through the motions and you think you're good. But that ain't going to cut it, man. Right. You know, because when, when, when it's really time to, to, to present what we're supposed to know on the forefront, you'll find that, hey, hey, scripture say, uh, you'll know what you ought to know. You know? So that's where humility comes in at. And that's where, uh, and I said in the lesson last night, hungry, hum being humble and hungry is a recipe for success, man. Mm -hmm. You got to stay hungry and you got to stay humble. That's how you grow. You know, desire that sincere milk. Sometimes you gotta just go back to the basics. Sometimes you just need to get the breakdowns on how we the Israelites, man. Yeah. Simple stuff, man. Yeah. And build off that block. You know? That's how you're increasing your learning. That's how you're able to hit multiple parameters in the spirit when you have multiple foundational pieces you can build off of, man. Okay, you can't this truth ain't about being one dimensional. It's a requirement to grow. That's right. You, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. This is uh, um, this is Haggai one and um seven. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You know, mm -hmm. short, simple, direct to the point. Consider your ways, man. Going to what? It's so it's constantly, constant self examination on a day to day basis. You know, am I really, you know, growing in the spirit? Am I doing what, you know, uh, you know, just, just you know, you have our shaman shot demands of me. Am I being too lax? Am I, you know? You don't want to, you know, get, you don't want to get into that space, man. So the scripture say what? To consider your ways, you know, put it out there and, and, and actually examine it. And if whatever's not right, you got to fix it, man. Do the do spirit, you know? I got something. Yeah. So James 1 and uh, 21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and su superfluity of naughtiness. Mm -hmm. And that word superfluity means excess. It says, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Just like uh, Bishop just said, you know, being humble. You know, that's, it says, receive with meekness the engrafted word. And so that's really the main thing is, is receiving the word. You know, growing in, growing in the knowledge, man. You know, and it, that word engrafted means planted, you know. It says, which is able to save your souls. And that's ultimately what's going to save our souls is, is getting into these scriptures. The scriptures say, blessed is he that read it. So right. that's our responsibility to, to purge out 
you know, we always uh, 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 read scriptures about purging out, you know, uh, the world, purging out, you know, your your old your old men. All right, you know, but application is key. We got to really stay on top of starting with myself, staying on top of, uh, uh, you know, your responsibilities and the truth. I keep going. It says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Like I said, action based. Uh, it says deceiving your own selves, and that's uh, what what the bishop said as well. Also, is uh, uh, you know you may think that you're doing things that that are beneficial, like you know you're doing certain things that carnally, you know, and you and you, you think that it, it's it has some, a, a spiritual benefit. But like you said, you you feeding your flesh. So that's what the scriptures say. Deceiving your own self, so you can actually deceive your own self. Absolutely. And what did you just read again? Um, what did it, what did it say? Uh, yeah, consider your ways. Yeah. yeah. Consider yeah. your ways. Consider your ways, right? right. Yeah. Consider your ways. You know, you, and the reason why you gotta consider your your own your ways is because you can literally deceive yourself. Right. Your mind, that that demon, you know, the old man can basically tell you that now nah, you're doing right. And that's what is that pride. Pride will always tell you that, oh, well, nah, you you doing the right thing. You doing enough, you know. You <coughs> you on point. You know you you doing what you should be doing. But like I said, you know everyone should be in the mindset of when when lessons like this come out, everyone everyone really getting cut, all right? Because it's it's always it's always you know uh, uh, more to do. You know mm -hmm. you should always look at lessons like this. And, and, you know, be humble by, by what the Spirit is saying. You're supposed to be ready to receive cuts. Whenever you see a lesson like this, you're supposed to be, oh, I'm about to watch that, sit up in your seat and take it. Mm -hmm. You know, get everything you need out of it so you can take that and scrutinize yourself, man. Right. You know, because this, hey, I've seen more men fall out and come in, mm -hmm. you know, and remain. And you look at the apostles, out when the apostles did the, did the lesson, they said out of that, out of that class, it was over 50 some people in that class. And it was only what he said, three or four men that's still here today. That's that that shook me up. Mm -hmm. You know, that made me look at myself. You know, and as well as well as you're supposed to look at yourself and see, well, why am I so damn special? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, well, why am I the cream of the crop? We gotta remember, man. The Lord said, our righteousness, our righteousness is as what filthy rags, man. Mm -hmm. We dealing with a, with a Creator who it pleased Him to bruise His only begotten Son, man. That he loved and cherished. Who are we? Right. It pleased him to bruise his only son. His only son. So we, we, we supposed to be in, in this thing digging it out like the Apostle Ramla did the lesson of today. Dig in, man. You know? It's coming to a time where, hey, either you got it or you don't, man. And you ain't going to be able to blame the next man for what you don't got. Especially when it's been liberally given to you and the spread was made visible for you to go up and eat whatsoever you wanted to eat, man. You know, it was your decision that you ain't eat off that certain plate, man. You know, you buy us precepts. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, bring this one uh, back out, you know, because brother's touching on it heavily. Uh, this Lamentations 3 and 40, it says, let us search and try our way and turn again to the Lord. And when you go into the word search, um, it goes into basically exposing yourself, you know, because mm -hmm. once you expose yourself to the things that you're lacking in, that leaves room for you to, you know, uh, recognize it and then work towards improving it. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the word um, try, uh, in the blue letter, it says to search, to search for, search out, examine, investigate, to search through, explore, to examine thoroughly. Investigate. You see that? That means you got to goddamn be like a forensic scientist to your own goddamn self. Mm -hmm powder the cloth, you know, <laughs> yeah, trying to find all kind of evidence where you off at, man. Yeah. You know, that's how we're supposed to be moving, man. You know, not making excuses for our shortcoming, that ain't gonna get you nowhere, man. We're supposed to be in the spirit of self-investigation, man, like the goddamn Sherlock Holmes, man. You're supposed to be a private eye to yourself, man. That ain't that ain't right about me. That ain't right. This ain't right. I could work better than this. Got more evidence where I'm slipping at. And you take these, these evidence and you compile it, and you and then what what is what are you doing to what is the forensic scientist doing? Why are they compiling all this evidence? To find the criminal. So when you do that to yourself, you find the culprit within yourself and you can get rid of it. Yeah. 
you can identify them and get rid of them. You can work at little things to get rid of the culprit of why you, you fell short in these areas. That's why it's good to search yourself, man. The scriptures gave us the light. It tells us that, and uh, what's that, Matthew 5? You are the light of the world. Yeah. So if we're the light, that means we can identify all kinds of problems within ourselves. It's just, are you willing to take that accountability? Or, are you, or do you want to sweep it under the rug because you want other people to think you ain't got no flaws? That's the key. And that, mm-hmm. that's where humility comes in at, man. Mm-hmm. And, and the second part of that verse, so once you searched out and tried your ways, it says, and then turn again to the Lord. So once you recognize the problem, it behooves you to take it to the Lord, man, and ask him for what you need improvement in. Right. And turn it over to the Lord. Don't search yourself out and you see all these flaws and holes and schisms and think and still think you're good. You know, that's a side of pride right there. Mm-hmm. And you think, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. It'll, it'll pass over. Oh, right. nah, man, turn again to the Lord. Right. Because, hey, that one schism or that one hole could snowball into something major, man. Next thing you know, uh, you looking at yourself on the outside, man. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That was I, it on that. I got a quick one real quick. This is uh, uh, James. I know you brought this out, but I wanted to bring it out again. This is James 1 and 20. It says, but be doers of the word and um, be, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Okay? For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he behold himself and go of his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is. Mm-hmm. All right? So you gotta you gotta be in a position to where you examine yourself, you see your flaws, and you do something about it, man. You know, you turn it over to your Habashim, you have a shy, you get into this, this this these scripts and you do what you what you do what's required. Right. Okay? That's it. Because if you're not if you're doing anything less than that, you are like a man who forgot what he looked like. That's right. And what kind of man is that? You can't even remember your own face. Your face, you know? You you sitting here talking to a professor, be a man of the Lord, you in the truth, you know, but then you you getting offended because you cut. You should be happy that you just got cut, bro. Yeah. Well, you should say that. Uh, happy is the man uh, that is reproved. Yeah. You know. What what man want to walk around doing the wrong shit all the time? <laughs> you know. Hey, oh, hey, you just gonna let me do the wrong shit? Nobody gonna correct me? Yeah. I didn't know I was doing wrong, and here it is. You knew you were gonna correct me. Uh, man, thank you for correcting me. Then you gotta. Uh, then you got a, an idiot, a one that's not a doer of the word. Man, I ain't trying to hear that shit. Right, right, right. You know? Just yeah. that, 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 that mentality or inside, you say, oh, that's not me. That ain't me. Instead of considering, well, you know what, that, 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 that may be me. Shit, that sounds like me. Let me take a look and see if that is me. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's like Jake, you tell he got something in between his teeth and he get offended. Man, why you all in my goddamn mouth? Like, bro, right. what do you mean? I'm right. trying to, you exactly. know. Help you help yourself, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got a quick precept. Galatians 6 and 3. For if a man think himself to be something mm-hmm. when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Mm-hmm. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So the scriptures say, <coughs> if, if you think yourself to be something when you when we're nothing, hey, we only something in the eyes of the how about you know shy. It's not about your position at a job. It's not about your, your yearly income. It's not about the car you drive, the house you live in, or the woman you got. That don't make you nothing. That ain't that don't get no merit, no brownie points in the eyes of the most high. Right. It's about who where do you stand that in the spirit of Yahweh Bashana was shot? Mm-hmm. How does he look at you? Are you a good servant to him? Right. Are you a loyal, you know, representative of him? Mm-hmm. So if you think anything else outside of that makes you something, you deceive in yourself. Because what happens when America collapses and you don't have these same luxuries? Exactly. Then who are you? You're not the job. You wasn't that position. Your woman left you. You wasn't that relationship. Okay? Your bank account is, 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 is through. You wasn't that bank account. Right. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you're always going to be who the Lord created you to be. So where do you stand at with that? That's where the scriptures say, if you think yourself to be something when you're nothing, you deceive yourself. We have to always move in humility and understand that we're replaceable. Yeah. We can always be replaced. There's always, there's, if you can't get it done, there's a Jake out here that will be willing to do 10 times more than you. And the Lord will find him and use him. And we have to keep that in our mind. Right. 
we got the golden opportunity. A lot of Jays didn't get this opportunity. But just because you got the opportunity don't mean that you a dead shoe-in for the election. There's another Jake out here that might come in this thing and might wipe, wipe you clean. So don't just be humble and work. Humble and work. Be charitable. Be thankful. Remember the scripture say 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, it says, be thankful for this is the will of the Most High concerning you. And if you show gratitude and even if you express thanks, then you're going to be the ultimate servant. Because you're going to be glad that you a, you a servant in, a, in the biggest mansion in fucking the state of Georgia. You ain't going to be worried about, I'm a slave. I'm, I'm a servant in the biggest mansion in the state. Like, look at uh, Butler, the, uh, Jeffrey off of the Fresh Prince. The nigga was happy, bro. You know, he was happy. He tried to, hey, Master Will, is this good? Master William, Master Philip, right? So what, if we the service of Yahweh Bashim I was shot, we supposed to be happy to be serving him, man. Because it's a Jake out here right now that the Lord can raise up and put the spirit on and then come in and he'll be happy to say, serve Yahweh Bashim I was shot. So don't think the Lord got to put up with, with, with mediocrity, man. Right. Apostle R said that, that, that the Lord expects nothing less than diligence, man. And that's just it. Nope. Hey, um, and, and uh, the Apostle Ramlot said earlier in his um in his video, dig in. He said the scripture say, "My servant, my my servant shall eat." Are you a servant of the Lord? You know that cut me right there. Mm. You know, because I, I was really thinking about that. I was actually considering that because that's your works right now is going to determine in that day of whether or not you're a servant of the Lord. That's right, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I was thinking, wow, am I serving the Lord? Am I? That, that, that goes into self-examination. You know, looking at yourself, taking a look. What am I doing? What can I do better? You know, you you, you can't just, you when you watch these videos and you watch these men that do this work, you really got to consider what the Spirit is bringing out. You know, you just can't take it uh, for shits and giggles and entertainment. The Elder Apostle Tahar, uh, in his video, he said, a lot of y'all watching this just for entertainment. You know, are you watching this for entertainment or are you trying to get something out of it? You know, this we're living in a time where we are literally on the edge. We're on the cusp of everything coming together. And the scriptures say, my servant shall eat. Are you the servant of the Lord? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Because, man, it's going to be hell. And that's, that's one of the worst ways to die. That is the worst way to die as a star. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> so that's all I had. I got a three. I got a three. But go ahead. Uh, uh, this is uh, James 1 and um, 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of the Most High, that give him to all men liberally, and upbraid of not, and it shall be given him. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. And that goes to go into the importance of uh, uh, prayer here. So, you know, yeah. being able to to come to the Lord and admit your mistakes, because the Lord already knows what you what, the, Lord, the Lord already knows what you uh, going to ask for. He already knows your weaknesses. Like the bishop was saying, uh, you got to come uh, to the Lord in uh, humbleness and sincerity. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask and actually believe that He's going to give you these things. You know, you're not going to pray for you know an Instagram model or you know or the, the 2021 newest ride or whatever. You're going to pray right. for spiritual benefits that's going to uh, build you up. And keep you going, because like the, the officer and the y'all was saying, we're gonna be coming to some serious times where you're gonna have to build yourself up. Are we on the, everybody's on this uh, party and BS mode right now because everything's opening back up. Mm -hmm. You can't fall into that same spirit of the world mm -hmm. going into that murk spirit. That's what the world is pushing now. Everything's back open. Everything is cool. We don't. We know that everything isn't cool. So we have to come, you know, to the Lord and ask Him for things that we lack. In. Yep. Yeah, and the Lord, the Lord will sit back and let and watch you struggle <laughs> until you ask him, until you humble down and ask him for help. You know, he'll he'll sit back and and, and watch you struggle. Like, damn, is, is this guy gonna <laughs> is this guy gonna ask me at, come to me and at, and ask me to deliver him? You know, mm -hmm. so the Lord can't deliver you out of something if you don't ask him, if you don't actually go to him humbly exactly. and, 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 you know, seek his, seek his help, you know, otherwise you just, you, you know, you just gonna watch it. Like those guys finish, you know, <laughs> this, um, second is yes. two. Oh yeah, go ahead. And, uh, 26. <clears throat> As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish. And this goes back to what the brother Nathaniel was saying. You want to know if you are serving in the day 
when the Lord come through for you. Now, what is the servant of the Lord according to the scriptures? The prophets. You would always see that constantly reiterated. My servants, the prophets. My servants, the prophets. So that means that you got to be into the prophecies. So if you ain't into the prophecies and you ain't prophesying, you ain't a servant. It don't, it don't care how many times you go to camp. If you don't know these breakdowns, if you don't know the prophecies, if you don't know what you ought to know, how could you be a servant if the servants of the Lord is prophets? Right. That's why, that's why the apostles and brothers push us to get into these things because that's how you build your relationship with Yahweh Bashim Shai, because that's his testimony, the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So it says, as for, my, as for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from among thy number. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble in heaven is coming, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. And that's what we also are looking for. We're looking to be protected when the Lord brings his wrath and indignation. But if you ain't scared of the Lord now, then don't think that, that when all hell break loose, that's your opportunity to finally be scared, man. And then, it, no, man. You put the Lord on the back burner now, the Lord put you on the back burner then. It's simple. Okay? It's simple science. You play with the Lord now in your liberty, the Lord gonna forget about you. Yeah. That's what he said. What did Yahweh Bashim Shah say? He said, Because you denied me, mm -hmm. I will deny you. And how do you deny the Lord? In your works. That's how you deny the Lord, man. The things that you're doing. So you constantly come up with reasonings as to why this thing can't get completed and why you can't finish your task. And then on the flip side, you don't want, like I always say, you don't want the Lord to bust open the sky for you. Send down the angel Gabriel, destroy a hundred troops, you flying all around Babylon, picking people up, doing whatever you want to do, burning people, picking up tanks, and you think the Lord gonna do all that. Can't you get the Lord two hours? See, this is where you gotta consider your ways. This is where it starts. The Lord ain't just gonna magically appear and have you doing that stuff. You gotta tap into it through your faith. And if you can't tap into your faith now in your liberty, how the hell are you going to tap into your faith in distress? Yeah. Don't make sense. So this is what we got to consider our ways and understand that this ain't no fantasy book. Right. You know, this ain't no uh, fucking uh, um, uh, uh, Dragon Ball Z anime or, or, or fucking Naruto. This is real life. Mm -hmm. You got to draw out the spirit of the Lord, but it starts with what you put in yourself now. If you can't have faith when everything is all good, how the hell are you going to have faith in distress? In anguish, in torment, when you really try. Don't think you're just going to magically get power. And, no, let's start with building your faith, man. Uh, Romans 1 and 17. It says the righteousness of the Most High is revealed from faith to faith. I mean, you got to grow in the spirit. You got to come up on a level in the faith. And that's why the Apostle Sahar did the video. He said a lot of you lack diligence and faith. And that's what you lack in faith makes you come up with these excuses. Is the game plan is over. Either you're going to build a nation or you're going to go do what you want to do. Simple. You know? You have something going on? Yeah, I got something. This is uh, Second Ezra 7 and 7. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there... Hold on. Wait. Oh, yeah. As, as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. Yeah, so, you know, this is this is... Like the brother's going to, this is this is uh, severe, man. This is this is a, a, a position that requires a, a tunnel vision. This when you when you're on a tightrope, like brothers always bring up a tightrope, and you got fire on the one side, uh, water on the left. You got to focus on on your steps, like brother saying, consider your ways. So you got you got to really focus in and and you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, stay on point. Before, lest you fall. All right. It says, uh, and and one only path between them both, even between the fire and water, so small that there could only that there could but one man go there at once. All right. Yeah. So you know that's pretty much the point. But this is a narrow entrance. Okay, where you have danger on both sides, and that's really the time that we're in right now. It's danger all around, man. This world is full of danger and wickedness and, and folly, man, you know, and we're walking the straight gate. We're walking that path, you know, and, and you know, it's important that we that we uh, uh, constantly uh, 
do what we gotta do. Maintain, maintain, and and abound like brothers is going into. Uh, I think that was that was the point. I think if brother got any uh, closing books, um, uh, I had some back you up on the second of seven. This is uh, Proverbs four twenty five. Let thy eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Like you said, you got you got to have tunnel vision in this truth. You know, it says um, twenty six. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. I believe you're going to say that word ponder. It means like to, to look at carefully. So watching how you walk in this faith. Like you said, you got the fire on one side, water on the left. You know, you're walking this tight rope. And any any false move, you know, you know, it, you know that could basically be a downfall. Man. So you want to you know ponder ponder your footsteps. Right? It says ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. So it says, and turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. You know that was the that was the main point. That's why I had some. Yeah. So, uh, hey, Lord willing, you were edified. Lord willing, this lesson motivates you and keeps brothers on fire. You know, we got to keep on pushing and enduring. You know, the Spirit is uh, showing us what what we ought to do. So that shows you that something is get something big is getting ready to happen. Uh, because the Lord is really tightening up ship, man, you know. So, uh, so yeah, brother, just stay on point and uh, build your faith, constantly endure, give diligence. And uh, with that, giving all praise to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, by Hashem, Kakodash. Shabbat to the elders and apostles, great millstone, Shalom. Shalom.